Thank you very much for the very appropriate and somewhat cheeky introduction, Sophia, and good to be here, guys. Thank you very much for having me. I'm here today to talk about uh, what is the value of a university degree, and trust me, uh, the irony of being at Macquarie University talking about the effectiveness of higher education is uh, certainly not lost on me. Um, what I'm planning to do today, guys, is bring an element of visibility and objectivity to this very question to look at what is being taught, particularly at a higher education level. Is it useful for the students and is it what the world needs? I think that for probably the last 50 years, we've had a cultural paradigm in our societies that suggests that university is almost an inevitable stepping stone to creating a life and a career that is meaningful and successful. And in my view, that is becoming less true. Academia used to uh, lead the way in terms of thought leadership in regards to most fields, be it business or science or arts or whatever the case may be. And by virtue of the rate of change in the real world today and how dynamic you know, the whole planet has become, uh, what the research is now telling us is that traditional education institutions, by virtue of their size and by virtue of their bureaucracy, are set up and are educating people perfectly for a world that no longer exists. If we were to look at higher education institutions in a traditional sense, uh, through a commercial lens, we would probably deem them to be mature enterprises, which is uh, quite large, very comfortable, uh, resistant to change and sometimes overpriced. The world is now starting to respond to this problem. Uh, one of the things we've seen recently is one of the most prestigious and uh, largest accounting firms in the world, Ernst & Young, um, has removed their criteria for uh, needing a university qualification in order to apply for a job. The reason that they did this was that they had their HR and uh, you know, their human resources department go through the research and it actually indicated that success in higher education did not correlate to success in a career or building a successful life. So I think we need to question for up and coming generations what is being taught? Is it worth it? And are we genuinely preparing students for the real world that they will inevitably one day step into? Right now, the sentiment of uh, particularly industry in the business sector is that there is a skill gap between what is being taught at university and what is uh, going to make somebody valuable in the workplace. 42% of employers believe that graduates are adequately prepared, meaning that somewhere along the line there is a, uh, a, a gap between what we are learning within the four walls of a university and then what is actually required when we step out into employment. Now the solution for this up until now has been work placements where students throughout you know, their university degrees will go out into a workplace for a couple of weeks or a couple of months each year and get their real life experience by going out into real world uh, environments. That is a very useful tool. However, for those that speak to students, and the room today is full of students, and I know that you all speak to each other, what these work placements unfortunately often uh, achieve is that the student gets to the end of their work placement and then purely is questioning why am I studying at university given that what I have been learning within the four walls of the university didn't actually prepare me nor correlate to what I was required to do or the thinking or the level of conversations or the output required when I stepped into this workplace environment. So they're actually coming back into the classroom disheartened after going into these work placements. And rightly so, you know, they're questioning, should I even, uh, is this the most effective path for me to engage in education? As I said, rightly so, 53.6% of graduates are coming out of uh, university and college globally and they are unemployed or they are underemployed, meaning they either don't have a job or they are working in a job that doesn't require them to have the degree that they've just worked and paid for for three or five or seven or eight years or whatever it might be in order to attain. What this means is that the value of a tertiary qualification in today's world is far less than what it used to be. 
in previous generations, having a university or a college qualification, a higher education qualification, almost guaranteed that you would step into a job in that particular field. However, that is no longer the equation. By virtue of there being far more degrees and far more qualifications out there in the marketplace, and by virtue of a changing world and the global financial crisis and all of these different forces that are now coming into play, I would bet that there's a lot of people in this room that have you know, travelled in taxis with taxi drivers that hold an MBA qualification. And there's nothing wrong with driving taxis, but that's not why somebody goes to university for five or six or eight years. The world is now uh, very rife with people who are overqualified and have skills that no longer correlate or have any direct application to the real world. And by virtue of so many more people going through our higher education structures today, I think that as educators, particularly at a higher education level, we can be doing more to support and empower these students in order to become the best version of themselves, develop themselves at an emotional intelligence level, and ultimately equip them with the practical skills that can be used out there in the real world. We've got jobs that don't have people, and we've got people that don't have jobs, and ultimately it comes down to a skills gap in the curriculum-based education that most of us are currently going through. Although the value is going down, the price is not. In the last 35 years, higher education has increased uh, its price, has inflated its price by 11, 1120%. This makes higher education uh, the fastest growing price, so there is no good or service that has grown in price other than higher education to this degree in the last 35 years, right? The challenge with that is that students now, you know, in, in, in America, for instance, student debt has gone over a trillion dollars. In Australia, it's about $30 billion. The problem is not the debt. The debt is not the problem. The problem is what is the value those that have received the debt received in transaction for that debt that they are now laden with? Right? This comes back to what I believe is the number one challenge across higher education and probably all levels of education globally. From my research and you know, years of exploring higher education institutions, years of working with high schools, uh, years and years of consumer insight at a student level for those that attend university, uh, and just conversations with everybody from faculty to deans to students. In my view, the number one problem we have at a higher education level is that right now higher education is a $4.4 trillion industry globally and very few people are looking at what's being taught. Large industry, it's become almost a machine and a beast in and of itself. However, in my view, education is what happens at the interface of teacher and student, right? What is the teacher talking about? How are they delivering the education? How are they teaching it? And is the student getting it? Are they learning it? Are they growing from it? And is it useful? That is the interface of where education happens. However, we have an industry where very few, if any, people are looking at what is actually being taught. In some universities, the KPIs are actually backwards. If they develop a piece of content, it's about how long can we keep that piece of content in play for. So in a lot of instances, faculty are incentivized to not update content and curriculum, which is scary given the rate of change in the real world. This point is probably best highlighted if we look at the most respected university in the world, Harvard uh, University over in Boston. Um, if we go back to 2012, and I'll tell you why in a second, but if we go back to 2012, Harvard did revenues of $4 billion that financial year. Uh, don't worry, their revenue continues to increase. In 2014, it was $4.4 billion. However, I bring up 2012 because this year they did $4 billion in revenue. That same year, one of their professors, a guy called Clayton Christensen, was speaking to uh, the Higher Education Appropriations Committee in Utah. And he was talking about how he believes higher education for the first time ever is now ripe for disruption because it's no longer serving, in a commercial sense, the consumer, which is, of course, the student. What Clayton was saying was he believes the number one reason for this is because 
We have large institutions that are spending a lot of money and investing a lot of money in a lot of things. However, at Harvard for 2012, as is the case for most other institutions, as is the case for every year previously, their budget that year in 2012, when they did $4 billion of revenue, their budget that year for making teaching better was zero dollars. I recently went over to Babson College in uh, Boston, right, right near Harvard. And for a similar reason, I'm always sort of researching world's best practice when it comes to education. Babson are held up globally as the world leader when it comes to entrepreneurial education. Um, we were in one of their entrepreneurial finance lectures. They were using case studies from corporate America th from 30 years ago. So entrepreneurial finance is relating to early stage, high growth businesses. However, the case studies and therefore the lecture and therefore the education that we're discussing is from corporate America. So you're looking at balance sheets with tens of billions of dollars from 30 years ago. And as somebody that's been in business for themselves now for about 11 years, I can tell you that those case studies are simply not useful. If anything, they're counterproductive for those looking out to go out and embark on an entrepreneurial career. The world is already finding its own solution to this education problem, right? Um, I believe that higher education, as Clayton Christensen suggested, uh, will be disrupted and will continue to change uh, in the coming years. And as we saw with Ernst & Young, you know, corporates and businesses and culture, uh, you know, it's, it's all starting to shift. What concerns me as still a, a young person in an up-and-coming generation, is that what hasn't shifted is the cultural paradigm that we should all go to university if we're accepted into it almost without question, almost at any cost. And that's the paradigm that I think we need to shift. University can be incredibly productive. Universally, university can be incredibly useful. However, I think we need to look at it objectively and ask what is being taught, is it going to be useful for me, and what path is right for me? If I talk to up-and-coming generations and students for a second, the three pieces uh, of advice that I would give to this particular problem is this. Number one, question it. Approach your education with the same objective thinking that your university encourages you to apply to your assessments and the world at large. No longer can higher education get away with uh, relying on a cultural paradigm for their value in 2015. So question it. And in questioning it, you might still decide to go to university, which, it might, which would be a great decision, provided it's been made using the right criteria and thinking through the right lenses. For those of you that decide not to go down a higher education path or not to engage in higher education, you will still do your apprenticeship. And I don't mean in a formal sense, I mean in a practical sense, right? I am a massive advocate for education. Massive advocate. I think that, you know, to grow as people and to evolve as human beings is the number one reason why we're here, right? It's just that we need to take responsibility for our own education and look at university and higher education as one piece to that puzzle and think about how are we educating ourselves and how are we growing into the person that will ultimately be able to build a successful career and make a valuable contribution. The second thing is master mentee. It's been proven that this skills gap that exists between higher education and industry uh, can be closed by those with real work experience. So if you are going through a higher education um, process at the moment, one of the most valuable things you can do is go and work for organisations while getting your education, even if that means working for free. And we're not going to walk into our dream job straight away. However, we will be around the right people, having the right conversations, and we will start to get visibility over how the real world works and how real employment places work in order to determine what could be our place, what are we good at, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, and where do we fit within all of that, how can we contribute and add value. Master mentee is to learn from somebody with being there, done that experience, and is probably the richest learning experience any of us can have. And lastly is embrace failure. Traditional education at every level teaches us that failure is not a good thing, right? Somebody else has the answers, you don't, they'll give them to you in a textbook, you'll then do an exam and they'll tell you whether you got the answers right or wrong, and if we get them wrong then we failed and that is not a good thing. 
at a paradigm and conceptual, even contextual level, this is almost the opposite to what goes on in the real world. For those that want to pursue a meaningful career, for those that want to become the best versions of themselves, for those that want to build a successful life, failure is an inevitable stepping stone towards success, right? It is part of the game and it is life. So culturally, we need to change our paradigm toward failure and toward making mistakes and start to be okay with that. For those of you that are ambitious and do seek out you know, a really meaningful career and a meaningful life, Failure will be an inevitable part of that, and that is absolutely okay. It was Nelson Mandela who said, education is the most powerful weapon with which we can use to change the world. And I, with every cell in my body, believe that to be true. If traditional education is no longer leading the way in terms of education, all it means is that we need to take more responsibility as up-and-coming generations, even if we are going through university and going through college and all of that sort of stuff, We need to take more responsibility over our own education and our own growth so that we can grow into the people we know we can become so that we can contribute to the world at large and solve some of the challenges that are coming up and ultimately capitalise on a lot of the opportunities that will arise over the next 50 to 100 years. Thank you very much.